Is BYU just going to be the loyal soldier that the Big 12 can count on? Well, it sure appears that way. We'll talk about a new column out of Oklahoma from Barry Trammell. We'll also get to the rest of the questions we did not get to on yesterday's show. And a big day in BYU sports for both the track and field programs as well as BYU baseball. We got all that and more on today's edition of Locked on Cougars. You are Locked on Cougars, your daily podcast on the BYU Cougars. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everybody? I'm Jay Catch, your host here on Locked On Cougars, your resident BYU insider. I work for the Zone Sports Network in Salt Lake City, Utah, as the executive producer of DJ and PK in the morning. And a huge thank you once again for making us here your first listen of the day. We are very proud to be part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where, of course, the mod is your team every day. And as such, this is your only daily podcast focused on the BYU Cougars. Before we get going here, I'm going to grab something. So hang on for a second while I step away from the mic a little bit. We are giving away some swag. And any of you listening to this on the audio version of your podcast, it's still the vast majority of you do. You can go to YouTube and see it. But regardless, I've got this hat here. It's kind of the old school Cougar Blockhead logo. It's a Zephyr hat. It's a snapback. You can look at it here. All the tags and everything still on. It's brand new. We're giving this away or this fancy little pullover who's more of a kind of a winter deal, but it's a half zip pullover. If you want to be entered to win this, we only have a few entries, really. I, I've got, I think, about five entries so far. I'm actually stunned that not more that more people have not entered to win this swag. But all you got to do, send us an email, lockedonbyu at gmail.com. Show us that you have subscribed on YouTube in particular. If you're listening to this on the audio format and you intend to continue to listen to it via audio, just subscribe on YouTube. I'll show that you're subscribed on one of the social media channels, Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Send me a screenshot, or you can say, hey, I'm subscribed. I can go out, and obviously, I can confirm that myself if I need to. And let us know why you think uh, you are deserving of winning this, and also a little bit about your background as a BYU fan. I've had some great entries so far, so thank you so much for that. But if you want to get in on this, the submission deadline I'm man, I'm having a hard time with this because I want to make sure we have plenty of opportunities for people to get into this, but let's have it in by Friday. Let's put it that way. Have it in by Friday. We will announce on, I guess, Monday's edition of the show. We'll send out the month of May by announcing our winner. And obviously what we're doing is we're celebrating getting to 500 subscribers here on YouTube, pushing for a thousand. We're nearing the 600 mark already, but a huge thank you for your support as always. All right. Now, with all of that mumbo jumbo out of the way, let's talk some BYU sports. And let's talk about a guy who I think is a huge proponent of BYU, has been crowing and pro being a vocal proponent of BYU even before they officially got into the Big 12. And that is the Oklahoman columnist, uh, Barry Trammell. And in the interest of full disclosure, I've got to know Barry very well over the past four to five years. He's actually been in Salt Lake City multiple times. He has been in studio with my day job at the Zone Sports Network with DJ and PK multiple times. I have driven him around. I've actually called cabs for him to get, help him uh, get out to the Salt Lake International Airport at one point. He does a great job. For, plain and simple, is a very fantastic job covering all things sports in the Oklahoma area, but more importantly around the Big 12. And he wrote a new column, I guess you'd call it uh, yesterday, saying that it's called Trammer's Scissor Tail. It says, BYU glad to help with Big 12 conferences football TV contract. And the premise here is that uh, Barry Trammell talks about how the Big 12 is going to be the only Power 5 conference who has three different windows available to them via the three time zones they will have schools in once BYU and the other new members of the Big 12 enter the conference. They have teams in the Eastern time zone, Cincinnati, West Virginia, UCF. I'm not mistaken, I think those are only three. The vast majority of the teams in the conference are going to be in that central time zone with the Texas schools, both the Kansas schools as well as Oklahoma State. And then out west in the mountain time zone is Brigham Young University. And as he writes here, it says Brigham Young fans would prefer to stay, play in the light of day. They have grown weary of 8.15 Utah kickoff times, courtesy of an ESPN contract, and 8.15 in Pro for October and November games can get quite chilly. It says, meanwhile, day games in the mountains that time of year can bring exquisite weather. It says that 
BYU officials know that their location gives B the Big 12 a unique status when the Cougars join the conference. It says that this gives the Big 12 a chance at four television windows on Saturdays when BYU plays a home game. The Big 12 would have games, and this is uh, this is Central Time he's listing, so 11 a.m., 2.30 p.m., 6 p.m., and 9.30 p.m., so in essence, 10 a.m. Mountain, 1.30 Mountain, Five o'clock Mountain, and then eight thirty Mountain time, and that's actually a very advantageous thing. Would be when Big Twelve with BYU as part of it goes to these new television contract negotiations and tells whoever may be interested, whether it's ESPN, Fox, CBS, Amazon, Netflix, at all. Apple wants to get in the mix. Sure, you throw it at them. Say, here's what we've got for you. We got four national broadcast windows, and BYU obviously they're going to play some home games. And if you're BYU, you suck it up and say, you know what? If you want us to play the late game, go for it. We will play those games. But the good news is if you're a BYU fan, is that with the new Big 12, when you travel east, when you're headed to the central time zone or you head all the way to the eastern time zone, whether it's to West Virginia, Cincinnati, UCF, et cetera, that is actually going to give you an opportunity to potentially play as early as 10 a.m. You can be playing at 1.30. The, it's not in the afternoon anymore, crowd. Guess what? It's going away, albeit with the caveat that some of those will be, or some of them, most of them will probably be road games. Every so often, I could see BYU getting that 5 o'clock mountain time, prime time window on the East Coast. I could see them even getting afternoon games if it's called for. If you have two big-name teams, you'll put them on the best channel in the best Posit, the best position to see have the most eyeballs on them. So if that means BYU is nationally ranked and let's say a Texas or an Oklahoma, Oklahoma before they depart the Big 12s coming in, or if an Oklahoma State is really good or Baylor, et cetera, you could find some very, very advantageous windows. But I think the biggest thing is that BYU is willing to do this. He says that there's a quote here from BYU athletic director Tom Homo about the late starts. And Barry was out here in Utah not too long ago talking with uh, Mr. Homo said this for quote for the last 11 years in independence that was the deal we gave espn a very unique window a mountain time zone window which they could use to their advantage i also uh, that's the quote there and this is tom also knows why his fans aren't crazy about it but he's quick to point out the benefits we get it i get all kinds of complaints when we have another 8 or 8 15 kick time but we're on tv nationally and we're on tv nationally on the big game we want those games that's one of our pillars we want those exposures we understand it could be a factor so that's the thing is BYU you're gonna have to put up with this with these late starts for for the Cougars when they're at home in particular like I said I'm not saying it's gonna happen every single time but I would bet more often than not especially early on in the season BYU 8:30 kickoffs on whichever network happens to sign up with the big 12 you can pretty much bank on BYU being in that slot. Now, obviously getting into November, that's when you're probably telling the Big 12, you don't want these late night kicks. It's going to be frigid. You could have all kinds of weather coming in. Put us in the afternoon on those games. Or if I'm BYU, in some ways, I may tell the Big 12, I'm actually more than happy to maybe play three road games in November versus one home game. That's just another idea to keep an eye on as well. You may tell them, hey, front load our home schedule when it comes to Big 12 play. Let us play the majority of our home games earlier on in the year and then back load us. If we can go to UCF and Orlando in November, great. If we can go to Houston, if we can go to Dallas to play TCU, and it's Fort Worth, but you know what I'm talking about, the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. If we can go to Waco, it's a little warmer. We're all about that. So there's some interesting things here. And the one other thing that uh, Tom Homo adds here says he's he thinks it's very unlikely every BYU home game will be a late night as part of some Big 12 package. But, quote, we'll have more than our share because it's a valuable slot for the Big 12. And more importantly, he says that we're going to jump in. You do what's best for the conference. And that is the right mentality as BYU goes into the Big 12 here. There's none of this uh, perceived BYU holier than thou or we're BYU, we're the big dog. They should not have that mentality and I hope they don't have that mentality going into the Big 12. Go in there, be a great program, be a winning program, but more importantly, get along with your conference mates. There have been multiple instances. Trust me, I know the Mountain West, I know the WAC, even go all the way going back to the Skyline Conference in the 1920s. BYU has been one of the quote-unquote big dogs who's been able to throw their weight around. You are not going to be able to do that right away if you're BYU here in the Big 12. You have a lot of established programs who are going to be more than happy to essentially put you in your place if you try to come in and big-time them. There is a reason why BYU is in going into the Big 12 because they have a brand, they have value, they add 
all kinds of eyeballs to the Big 12 in the overall scheme of things with the Big 12 Conference. But BYU needs to be a partner with these schools. There's no going in there acting like you're entitled if you're the Cougars. That should not be in the lexicon for BYU here. So I'm hopeful that they can work with this, and I'm hopeful that Tom Homo's quote is exactly how BYU operates. We're going to jump in. You do what's best for the conference, unquote. That's the way to do it if you're BYU. All right, coming up here in just a minute, I got a number of questions still to answer on today's show we did not get to yesterday. We'll get to those. We'll answer as many of them in the time we have remaining on the show. We'll also talk a little bit later on about BYU baseball as well as track and field. We got to all of that here in just a moment. First, though, a word on our friends over at Rock Auto. This episode of Locked On Cougars is brought to you by rockauto.com. With the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models of all vehicles, it is now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you need so why would you go there when you can go to rockauto.com and have every part for every model every make available to you guys on one website that's the best part is they want to save time and money for you when you use rock auto use their resource why would you willingly choose to spend 30 50 even 100 percent more for the same parts from a chain store or car dealership when you can go to rockauto.com the best part is it's a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years i have used this resource multiple times my daily driver is getting up there pretty high in mileage I've had to replace a number of parts rock auto has been an absolute godsend to help me out with this rock auto's prices are reliably low for every customer and they have everything you could ever need brake parts tail lamps mortar oil even new carpet that's what you're looking for go explore the easy, easy to use website today to find the solution for all of your auto parts needs head to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck make sure you write locked on in the how did you hear about us box so they know that we sent you give us some credit for sending you to check out this resource it's absolutely incredible amazing selection reliably low prices all the parts your car will ever need that's rockauto.com Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. For your next listen, make sure you guys check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast. It has the biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and of course, the take of the day. It's available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get podcasts, just like us here on Locked On Cougars. All right, let's get to your guys' questions I did not get to yesterday. Let's start off with a Ute fan. Ooh, this should be fun. Our good friend Dustin, aka Highlights Ute, who loves to troll around, but I've gotten to know Dustin really well. I actually played with him in the Utah Social Open last summer. Great dude. I'm, I'm serious about this. And Dustin, if you happen to be watching this episode, Props to you, sir. We asked this question. We all know that BYU would lose to Utah if they played this season, but how much would they lose by? Well, Dustin, we don't know that because BYU currently is on a one-game win streak, and guess what? They will hold on to that win streak for at least two more seasons. I actually think this would be a very good game if you put the Utes and the Cougars against one another once again this year. It would be in Salt Lake City in theory. That would obviously, I think, give a home field advantage to Utah, and it would be a very interesting matchup, but I man, I'm not just saying that Utah would win that game. BYU proved last year that they can go toe to toe with Utah. Now there have been many, many years over the past 12 or so years before last season that I could not say that BYU was capable of going toe to toe with the Utes. The depth, the overall talent base for Utah seemed light years ahead of the Cougars. Cougars have done a really good job under Kalani Sitake playing catch up here, and that win. There was no fluke about it. BYU absolutely pummeled Utah at the point of attack. Kyle Whittingham said as much. He gave credit to BYU saying that we got beat in the trenches in this game, and that's a decided advantage that Utah had had for the better part of a decade. I'm not saying that BYU would have lost this game this year if they were to play hypothetically. I think it'd actually be a pick type game, honestly, if you were asking me for my betting parlance. All right, next question up comes from 406 Cougar, who asks, who are they going to hire, speaking of BYU, as the new baseball coach? Well, I think that is a very interesting question because I think Trent Pratt has done an incredible job stepping in for Mike Littlewood. Obviously, he would offer continuity from the Littlewood regime, having been with Littlewood at his stops in Dixie State, as well as transitioning to BYU. Trent is as ingrained with BYU as any interim coach possibly could hope for. And the more important part is he's got BYU on fire going in to this uh, West Coast Conference tournament, which begins tonight. I guess I can uh, talk about that right now. BYU is in action tonight against LMU. It's a one-and-done situation right now for BYU baseball. If they win, they advance to take on most likely number one seed Gonzaga. That's a big opportunity for the Cougars. The game time is 7 o'clock out there in Stockton, California at Banner Island Ballpark, 8 o'clock Mountain Time. There's a live video link on the West Coast Conference, or excuse me, the WCCSports.com, the West Coast Conference Sports website, if you want to watch that game. But there's a huge opportunity here for BYU. I think if they finish the season strong, 
I would say the odds on favor, and I, I'm not reporting anything. This is just my personal opinion on the matter. If they finish the season strong and have a nice run here in the West Coast Conference Tournament, and heaven forbid they make the NCAAs with the regionals, that's going to be a lot of work for BYU to make it. But I think that Trent Pratt is absolutely uh, maybe the, the front runner for this job. There are a number of other coaches out there. Uh, this is the coach. Oh, I looked up his name right before I recorded. I closed the page. Um, El Camino, uh, the junior college down there in California. He is a member of the church, their head coach. Uh, man, if I can find the... Uh, <laughs> I'm typing this as, as I do this. Let's see. Nate Fernley. There you go. Nate Fernley is a member of the church. He's been 15 seasons at El Camino. He's done a really good job at the junior college level. He'd be an interesting hire as well. I'm sure BYU will consider his candidacy. But, man, if you're asking me, 406 Cougar, I think that Trent Pratt should be the odds-on favorite to get that gig. That's just my personal opinion on the matter. I think he's done an incredible job stepping in in a very difficult circumstance as the interim head coach, replacing a guy who gave him his starting coaching, has been his mentor for many, many years, multiple decades, it feels like, at this point. Trent Pratt, I think, is the one I would tab to lead uh, BYU baseball forward. All right, Chase Messer weighed in and asked, does Rudy Williams need a waiver since he is a two-time Division I transfer? And Chase, the answer I have for you is that if BYU were waiting on a waiver, they would not have announced that Rudy Williams has signed with the BYU basketball program. That is the evidence that he is immediately eligible. The way I understand it, if I'm not mistaken, he did graduate or he will be graduating from Coastal Carolina, so he is good to go. He is good to play this year, and there is no reason to doubt anything about that. Obviously, extenuating circumstances could pop up. The NCAA is stupid with stuff like that, but I have no reason to believe that Rudy Williams will have any type of issues in terms of getting himself eligible to play this fall and very much looking forward to seeing him suit up with BYU basketball. Uh, to answer another question that came in yesterday, I talked about, it was like a no news is a bad news thing. I don't remember who the listener was, but uh, I talked to some people yesterday. I did some digging on this and really everything with BYU basketball right now very much is in a holding pattern. We don't know what Kim Aiken's status is, the transfer from Arizona. We don't know who the new assistant is. I'm hearing a lot of buzz that there's still four viable candidates for that open assistant job under Mark Pope and on his staff. So there's some very interesting times ahead, but for all intents and purposes, we're kind of in a holding pattern. Uh, it could be news that breaks as soon as you guys hear this podcast. You could be listening to this uh, on a Wednesday afternoon, and that news already broke. But as of recording, I'm recording this late Tuesday night. I do not have much on the basketball front right now. It's just very much just kind of sitting out there. That's And I know that doesn't sound great. Well, give me all the information. Give, give me the dirt, Jake. Well, I'm giving you what I got. That And I promise you guys, and by the way, uh, any of you new to this podcast, if you're just checking us out for the first time, you made it this far, I can promise you one thing on this podcast. I give you guys everything that I can find when it comes to BYU. I don't hold information back. I will always protect my sources. I'm very clear about that, but I will never hold back information. I am not going to play cat and mouse games with you guys here on the podcast. I feed you guys everything I get my hands on. So you can be assured of that. All right, final question we are going to address here on today's show was interesting because it actually came more via comments about, actually, there's two, two, two separate issues here. So there were comments both on social media, on Facebook. I got these on YouTube. I also got them on Twitter. And we'll start off with the first one with regards to BYU going into the Big 12 and who their rival should be. So Johnny Rocks, Outside View, and John Bitter were the three that I remember seeing on YouTube said that they don't want BYU and Baylor to actually be a rivalry. They th that uh, they're two like-minded universities. There's a lot of respect between these two. And you need to let, as they said, rivalries develop naturally. I'm in agreement with that. I just think Baylor could very easily become that type of a game, especially if we have the type of games that BYU had last season in Waco. And obviously they're hoping to deliver some payback in Provo on September 10th. But very interesting there. Uh, the team that I think that could be, uh, become a very quick rival for BYU is TCU. The reason why they spent time in whack together. Many of you who are old enough will remember when Mountain West days, when uh, TCU was a member of the Mountain West Conference before they got into the Big 12, BYU and TCU had some absolutely classic matchups. I remember TCU absolutely destroying the quest for perfection in 2008. David Oswald couldn't block a barn door it felt like in that game and max hall was getting his head taken off by jerry hughes there's also that barn burner double overtime loss in provo when tcu i think is their very first year in the mountain west conference uh, byu should have never lost that game there was some horrendous officiating uh var of uh, video review absolutely screwing the cougars in that game 
there are some very, very classic matchups. I remember Ladanian Tomlinson way back in the day. I was sitting in the West Stands watching Ladanian Tomlinson play for TCU back in the day. So I think the natural rival, if you want to just uh, peg one right away, it could be TCU. Obviously, Gary Patterson leaving that program and Sonny Dykes taking over maybe takes away a little bit of that. I know some people like to like to call Gary uh, Gary uh, Mr. Froggy Pants because he always was hiking his pants up as he's walking down the sidelines. But if you want me to pick a rival right now for BYU day one going in to the Big 12, it's TCU. I think that's the one you peg as your rival. But obviously, there are going to be rivalries that develop naturally. If BYU and Oklahoma State get into it, that could be a fun one. The Kansas schools, who knows? Maybe UCF and BYU becomes that the cross-conference rivalry that these two teams just, when they play, they play classic games. I don't know which one of these is going to develop into that quote-unquote natural rivalry, but there will be one that pops up. But if you want me to pick the rival that BYU probably should have right now, Maybe it should be TCU just because of the shared history they have, the some of the classic games they've had. It's been over a decade since they played, but I think TCU would be a very, very natural pick to fill in as that rival for in the early going of Big 12 play. Now, the other comment that came in, there is too many people to name on this, is that I argued yesterday that Jaron Hall is absolutely a top 25 quarterback. And some of you pointed out, I actually missed a Grayson McCall, who is a G5 quarterback for Coastal Carolina, obviously the guy who helped engineer that upset of BYU, if you want to call it an upset, in uh, at Coastal Carolina just a couple of years ago. Uh, he is on that list, so it's maybe not all Power 5 snobbery. I just cannot believe that Jaron Hall is not a top 25 quarterback, but man, a number of you said I'm dead wrong. You said that Jaron Hall, he's made a glass. He's not able to stay healthy. He doesn't have a big enough arm. He's not, he's not the, he's not clutch. Okay. You guys have your opinion on this. I did not know the BYU fans were so out on Jaron Hall, but I'll tell you this much. I've talked with enough NFL talent evaluators is probably the best term for them who believe that Jaron Hall is at very worst a mid round draft pick next year. That is what they think. There is first round buzz for him. If he has a big year this year, uh, this is not me just throwing this out there. As I said, I protect my sources, but I've talked to enough people who think that Jaron Hall is poised to have a monster year. I don't know how, what's going to take for BB fans to buy in, but man, some of you are really out on number three, but interesting. So all the questions, all the comments. I cannot thank you guys enough. It's so much fun to have this. Please continue to send them in, whether it's uh, via comments on YouTube, whether you're uh, tweeting at me, sending me DMs on Twitter, whether it's the Locked On Cougars or my personal Twitter feed, Jacob C. Hatch is the handle. Love hearing from the, from you. Or email us, lockedonbyu at gmail.com. Enter the giveaway, as I just showed the gear earlier on on today's show, but also throw a question in. If you got a question, let me know, and I'll be happy to address them in a future edition of Locked On Cougars. All right, coming up here in just a minute, we'll talk about everything else going on in BYU sports. 59 track and field athletes are headed to the NCAA regionals. We'll talk about that. We'll also talk about a number of BYU baseball players, the Batcats, getting postseason honors from the West Coast Conference. We've got all that coming up in just a moment. First, a word on our friends over at Bet Online. They continue to be the number one source for all your betting needs and sports information. Find all the latest odds, news, and sports developments, including this year's basketball playoffs in the NBA, Major League Baseball scores, fights, and even next season's NFL futures right now at Bet Online. It is your continued source for all of your sports wagering information from live betting to the playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action available to you guys now. That's all courtesy of your friends at Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, before we go on today's show, let's talk about the 59 uh, entries into the 2022 NCAA Division I Outdoor Track and Field West Preliminary, which for some reason the West Preliminary is taking place at John McDonald Field in. Fayetteville, Arkansas. Huh? Who thinks that Arkansas screams West? Don't ask me, but that's where it's at. The good news is the number nine and number 14 ranked men's and women's track and field programs are headed to Fayetteville with a bevy of athletes. The men's team qualified 23 athletes in 24 entries, including the 4x100 and 4x400 relay teams. Uh, they'll have that opportunity there. On the women's side of things, 37 total entries, including two relay teams, sending 34 total athletes to Arkansas. So some great opportunities. Um, by the way, there is one athlete, I just saw this, heptathlete Hallie Folsom Walker is actually automatically qualified for the nationals, but she's also qualified for the 400 meter hurdles at the West preliminary. So she'll be in that event, but she's going to have to compete in the he heptathlon. She's actually on her way to nationals. Regardless, it's a big opportunity for BYU baseball. 
They have 10 steeple chasers, which is one of BYU's traditional strengths. They could have any one of these athletes win the steeple chase on the men's and women's side of things. Uh, BYU has two of the uh, their athletes in the steeple chase ranked among the favorites. They can obviously have an opportunity in the pole vault. Uh, Zach McWhorter has done an incredible job with the pole vault all season long. It's kind of the one thing on his resume he does not have is a national championship. Hopefully he can have a good showing. He actually grew up not too far away down there in Arkansas before going to BYU. So he's going on home turf in theory. So there's a huge opportunity for BYU here. They have two athletes, number one in the nation, Ashton Reiner, who has the farthest collegiate javelin throw in the country. Her throw of 198 feet broke her own school record and is 23 feet farther than any throw in school history. So she's obviously going to be in the mix there. And I already mentioned Zach McWhorter. Uh, he has an outdoor season that has the number two mark of 18 feet, 10 and three quarters inches. He has cleared 19 feet, two and a quarter inches in indoors. So there's a huge opportunity here for BYU men's and women's track and field. We'll of course recap this next week once this is all in the books. That starts today. It runs through the weekend down there in Fayetteville, Arkansas for the West preliminaries. We couldn't find a team, you know, west of the Mississippi to host the West regionals whatever. All right. Last thing before we go here, actually two things you got to get to. Uh, congratulations to 11 BYU baseball players on getting honors from the West Coast Conference and the postseason awards that were announced earlier this week. Austin Deming was the headliner. He was on the number, he was on the first team uh, as uh, the only all WCC first team honoree on the second team. If I can get this pull up here, I'm doing this on the fly here. Uh, but we have a sophomore shortstop, Brock Watkins, and three BYU pitchers, Nate Daly, Cooper McKeehan, and Jack Sterner were named to the 13-member second team. Four Cougars were named All-WCC Honorable Mention with Mitch McIntyre, Cy Nielsen, Ozzy Pratt, and Bryce Robinson, and Ryan Cepede. And then also BYU newcomers, Ozzy Pratt, who we already mentioned, and Colin Reuter were named to the West Coast Conference All-Freshman Team. So congratulations to all 13 of these honorees. Very cool to see them, 11, 11 players overall but 13 different citations across those West Coast Conference uh, citations, the all WCC teams. Big opportunity for BYU tonight. they got to beat LMU to advance in the West Coast Conference tournament. We'll be rooting them on 8 o'clock Mountain Time tonight once again, just as a reminder for you guys. Final thing before we go here is another member of our Top 50 Countdown, and we're going to the offensive line in the independent era. And this was an easy name to pick out because he just made some headlines earlier this week that his former BYU offensive lineman, Riker Matthews, out of American Fork High School came to BYU in 2012 as a highly thought of three-star prospect. Really was a standout from day one for BYU. A guy I always enjoyed watching. Had prototypical size, six foot six, 300 and some odd pounds. Just every bit looked the part. Had some injury concerns during his career at BYU, but the important thing is he overcame them, finished his career in a positive fashion. But for the last seven or so years, he has been chasing the pro football dream. He's played, spent time in the NFL on practice squads, of very NFL various NFL teams, but he's also gone to the CFL, the Canadian Football League, and has had incredible success north of the border, playing for both the Hamilton Tiger Cats, if I recall correctly, and then most recently, the BC Lions. Got to say congratulations to Riker Matthews on a well- deserved career because a lot of guys chase the pro dream and sometimes they don't know when to give it up or it doesn't work out for them. He chased the dream. He was not afraid to go north of the border and became a standout player in the CFL. I think he actually made an all CFL team at one point during one of his seasons north of the border up there. Uh, the hope is that the CFL will get back to playing because you have guys uh, like I'm trying to think of the there's a defensive back from BYU who's currently playing for the Toronto Argonauts if I recall correctly. Um, Who is it? Oh, Robertson Daniel. That's who it is. Robertson Daniel Where's the number zero? I believe it's for the Argos. Uh, he is obviously hoping that CFL, CBA can get uh, done because this, the CFL is supposed to kick off their season June 9th. So they got to get some things in order with regards to their players association and a collective bargaining agreement. But Ryan Kerr Matthews, another member of our top 50 countdown here from the independent era. Tomorrow we'll flip over back over to the non-independent era, the legends group, as we call them, uh, going back in the, record books a little bit. We talked about Giff Nilsson yesterday, but Riker Matthews with him retiring this week, I thought it was a pretty apt time to have him on our top 50 countdown for the independent era class players. All right. That is going to do it for today's edition of the show. We made it through. I have exhausted all the questions if I'm not mistaken, but Hey, 
you guys got more of them, happy to address them on tomorrow's show, a special edition, a crossover with Locked On Ducks. We're going to talk about Oregon and BYU, the week three game up there at Autzen Stadium. What do BYU fans need to know about ahead of that game? We'll get to that on tomorrow's edition of the show. So thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Now go make our friends over at Locked On Big 12 uh, your second listen of the day. I was on our round table edition, which should be available now wherever you get your podcast or on YouTube. Uh, Josh neighbors does an incredible job making sure you're up to speed on everything with regards to the big 12. Check that out wherever you get your podcast until tomorrow. Have a great rest of your day. This has been the locked on Cougars podcast for August, not August, August, August will be football season. This has been locked on Cougars for May 25th, 2022. See ya.